these are plants. These are plants that have been forgotten. I'm gonna revamp them right now. I gotta drag them to the greenhouse. Should be able to lift this. Yeah, I can lift it. What up, Clark? What up, baby doll? Look at this pathway Bob Ross drew for me. Happy little accidents. Happy white, fuzzy, smelly accidents to not step on. What are you doing today over there in Hawaii? Hawaii. Is there a celebratory atmosphere over there because of all the rare fruits you have and that beautiful climate and the tourism, rustle and bustle, children dancing with those leis, whatever they call them around their hooplas, whatever they call them around their neck, cloning a lemon bush up. That's nice. I'm just restoring these plants. These are some forgotten trees. So I put them all in a 25 gallon and I'm gonna slip them over to the greenhouse. I should have a dolly, but I don't. So I'm just dragging them. This is working out just fine. This is just fine. I've been meaning to take a load to the dump. All this trash over here. I've been meaning to take it, but I ain't taked it. I think I'm getting low on Patanga tubas. I need to separate out some that I have and put them in individual pots. So that's one of my goals right now is separate out some of these Patanga tubas. There's a tree that made it into the ground. Ruh row. Here's the Patanga tubas. I'm sure I'll run out of pots really fast. I might have to walk back to the house to get pots. But here's my little station. Oh, I think I've got to get more soil over here too. I'm out of soil. So we need soils and you so I know I'm out of seeds. Haven't had a lot of fruit production, so I'm out of seeds. But let's start with them, some Patanga tubas. Pull them out. I got a bunch of seedlings here that I gotta make right. these ones i found a bunch of plugs that look real nice that could go into one gallons this is a potomba that needs to get in the pot a red jabo looking nice some other potomba here this is an oak seedling oak seedling potomba a red jabo I know I got another bunch of these Patanga tubas and plugs. Whew. Let's see if we can make a difference in the world real quick. Where do you put the phone anymore for these videos? I, I had a pot that was working real nice. Let's see if this works. I got these nice dishes here. Oh, no, no. Okay. Yeah, that does it. That'll do it. That'll do it. Hopefully the reception's all right. Let's give them the plant side view. Started. Here's a Patanga tuba. Could go in this pot here. There's this root here. Look at that root. I will go ahead and break that root off. Break, break that root off. Set it in the container. Fluff it on up. That's a pretty one. That could make its way to eBay in a day or so. That one did it. Let's put it on a tray. I got a, I got a rack here. One of these things. These are great. If you can get yourself some milk carton trays or whatever, the milk bread crates. Those are great. Go to Publix and ask them for all their bread crates. Sir. You go early in the morning when they leave it out front and get you some bread crates. That's what we used to do as kids. Get us some bread crates. iPhone backed up, baby. Mark Appleberg's got my data. You can see all those pictures I sent. 
this is what we do on the days that are not too busy get in there this pot's got a crack and i'm still using it yo 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 what's up what's up everyone this pot's got a hole in it i got all these random seedlings that are just floating around and just put that in a pot so it doesn't go to hell there's one there this is making money what's this an oak that's an oak that's an oak that's a pitomba this is a pitomba that's a red let's put that red in a pot a lot of diversity out here a lot of the stuff I take as common is now uh, is more rare than I think, and I forget. I keep forgetting. Half the world doesn't even know what these plants are. So it's fun. Here's a Potomba. We'll put it in that red solo cup. I fill you up. Proceed to party. Let's have a party. Eugenia Lushnathiana. Okay, write that down. Put that in your notebook. Red Solo Cup. Way more than half in the world, man. I want to talk to you about the world, man. Here's another uh, tree here. It's another. I could put that. Ooh, I hear some thunderous noise. It's like a plane, like a sonic boom. Another one there. Potomba. Let's get all the Potombas squared away. Here's another Potomba. These were in a three gallon pot, but they didn't have much roots. And I let them get really cold. They went through some leaves, but they'll be fine. We're gonna water them real good after they've been repotted. Put them in the oven for 35 minutes I'll pull off any of these long roots on these Patanga tubas this is a real nice plug that was in a plug it's probably two years old if I had treated it and gave it more fertilizer and care it would have been bigger I've been hearing a weird boom too that's nice these weird booms are very good weird booms are good luck always looking for that next weird boom but these are some plugs that I should have repotted a long time ago. There it is. Yeah, that sounds like uh, some kind of jet activity, maybe. Right? Could be. Sounds like a thunder, more or less. Here's some uh, more. Look at this plug. That's a nice plug. See, these are the ones I'm not going to list on my website and sell for a normal plug price. That thing's a foot and a half tall man that's a hundred dollars i need to take some of these patanga tubas and keep them in pots and grow them i'm probably going to keep a good 30 40 50 to get them fruiting again real good just in case the ones i have in the ground take a shit the ones i have in the ground they they did so much better in the pots and i planted them out where it's a little too wet and they're taking a while to get adapted you always got to have a backup plan so you keep some in pots and I'm keeping some real nice ones in pots. I just don't have the multitude of seedlings I used to have from the production of the uh, trees. I used to get these wonderful crops, but then they got to a certain size when they got too big in the container. And I didn't want to put them in the next size pot. And I planted them out and I didn't probably do the best job of planting them. I could have put them in more strategic locations but you make do with what you got. You know, I only planted out about 35 of them. It's not the end of the world. They still do fruit. It's just not like they should because of this wet ground, I believe. And then I don't fertilize them like I should. You gotta fertilize these things. They, they, don't, they don't really do too well if you don't fertilize them. And they're a little more demanding than like some of the other trees I have in terms of fertilizer. They'll sit there, they'll live, they'll look fine. Just won't fruit as much, I guess. I don't know. I got one right next to my chicken coop and that's the one that puts them out. It's protected and it gets all sorts of chicken dew. 
and it's just a good location for that particular tree. So that's what we're look. Look at that. I went to pull a weed out of the root ball, but the weed was the plant. That was not good, bro. Let's look at that on the slow mo on the replay. That's how you make mistakes, a vital mistake. If that was like a rare fruit tree, I'd be like, dang, it might die now because I hurt the roots. But this is just a Patanga tuba. And I'll put it in the greenhouse, it'll be fine. Yeah, these are some nice plugs that I had that I got left behind, bro. You got me jib jabbing today. Uh oh, I found another Patoma, but let's put that in a bigger pot. That's a nice one there. That could hit the eBay one day. One day. One of these days. I'm about to run out of soil and I'll have to walk back to the house and get more soil and then mix that up. That's a whole nother chore. You put in building work on top of work on top of work and giving yourself more stuff to do every second, bro. Whew. I'm glad I got these pots here. I forget where I got them, but I'm thankful to have them. Where did I get these pots? Somebody gave me these pots or I got them somewhere and I'm very happy to have these. Oh, I remember. Yep. I remember where I got them. Thank you. I remember where I got them now. Uh-huh. <laughs> Look, that's a country crock. Country creamer. It's a knockoff country creamer. That came in my pots. We're using it. I like that country creamer. I only grow in country creamer pots. They're the best. The plant, the plant slide right in and out. And you get a little bit of that oil keeps the bugs off. 16 viewers, everybody take notes. This is how you make a ton of money without actually working right now this burning my eyes and they just come together here's one here where we're just looking that's got that sandy soil that was not good this is a bit of that peat moss and I revamp it and that'll just take off nice red job to cover there put that there heck gone to heck i tell you i'm making i'm making headway here I'm making headway. I'm gonna start working faster. I know everything's on the line. If I slow down, it's on the line. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Mm, so what are y'all doing today? Patanga tubas. This is all the same soil mix for everything it's basically just peat moss with a touch of perlite if you're lucky enough to have some fertilizer to throw in there that'd be great but i didn't have any fertilizer so this is the, just peat moss and perlite probably 95 percent peat moss and then the rest perlite was only about five percent okay it's a nice little seedling i think i don't know what that is it's, i didn't label it so we just have to sit there and let it grow for a while i'll put it in a smaller pot This is what we do on our days off. This is it, man. This is the final countdown. Running out of space in these trays. I got one more, two more trays, all right. One right there. A Potomba, you sent is throwing out runners. That can't be a Potomba. You know what it probably is? Is that um, it's probably Eugenia Pitanga. There's a Eugenia that throws out these crazy runners. I believe I sent you one. So these, this is a bunch of Pitanga tubas that are all together. And I'm just gonna pull the weeds, knock out soil, and then separate these like this. There's one. Two. Four. Interesting. Five. Six. Look at this one. It's a seed with roots that never sprouted. I'll plant that. It's it was it, it's it, it, it's alive still. I gotta save that one. And then these two. And this one got the biggest piece of pie, so we'll put that in a one gallon. Mm. 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 
Okay. One. These can handle bear rooting pretty good. Just don't be too rough with them. You don't have to fill up the pot all the way either. Now I lost that seed. I knew I'd do that. See if I can find that seed. There it is. I'm gonna try to save that seed and put it in a small pot. And then just pray. Sometimes they come back from that for sure. I've seen them come back from worse. I'm going through and trying to separate as many of these as I can and get as many Patanga tubas as I can in seedling form because I'm just running a little bit low on this uh, particular. I usually have tons of them, but right now I don't have as many. And all I have to do is... I still have that variegated Patanga too, but it's doing really well. I've grafted it. It looks like the graft is taking for the graft that I did. A little tiny thing. But that variegated one will be fun one day. Hopefully I can get that out there to you. And it, and it holds the pattern and it makes it a cool looking fruit. It'd be cool if the fruit was variegated. I know there's a guava that's variegated that makes a variegated fruit. But I heard the uh, variegated Jabuticaba doesn't make a variegated fruit fruit it's just a regular fruit so i wouldn't be surprised if the fruit is not variegated but it makes you wonder how do you get a variegated orange or a variegated guava and the fruit's variegated but now would a variegated patanga tuba have a variegated fruit because that's more like a guava than a patanga uh jabuticaba to me i don't know. wonder if the fruit's variegated could be figure that out if i'm lucky the tree's not yet ready to flower it's only couple years old and it's growing real slow so it's uh probably got another year and a half before it flowers and then you know they flower and don't even set fruit which wouldn't surprise me if this one tries to do that you know it's one out of so many trees will have issues and they flower for a couple years and you know they don't set fruit at first and then some just have trouble forever but that's pretty rare and i think it has to do with the bloodlines there was an original introduction of patanga tuba and those seedlings were just not as good as the ones that we introduced again there's another seed there Let's see if it's still good this looks like it's still good i'll just put it in there the newer introductions is the better bloodlines and they taste better set a lot of fruit the other ones would flower not fruit I did pretty good. Still got a ways to go. Citrus use radiation to make them strive, but uh, I don't believe this. It's natural. Come on. Probably they do both, but there's a natural, a naturally occurring variegated variety of citrus, I'm sure. These are all these Patanga tubas. I'm still separating these out. These are really pretty ones, too. They've been in the greenhouse. See if I can knock these out. I'll show you with the work I've done here in a minute. Let's see if I can tilt that just a little more like that. And then like that. Yeah, there's different ones there. You're gonna start to see them tinkering. You better believe it. They're gonna have all this new tinkered stuff come out. There you go, friend. Did you hear who the largest, the largest farmland owner in the United States is? Do you know his name? I'm sure you've heard farm owner in the United States. Okay. I'll wash his feet next time he comes here. You got it. BG owns thousands of acres around me. That's good. He's going to take 
care of it, man. He's going to re release these, these new mosquitoes that help everything. And he's going to have all the new pollen that blows over to your place. And then little synthetic biological creatures waltzing around. It says, Adam, you are... This is why I got that plant. I used to love that movie, Little Shop of Horrors. I memorized that. Don't worry about a part of the plan. Yes, trust the plant. It is a beautiful plant, but the companies that are weird... Uh, you hide this yeah, it's true, though. They do these these little companies that aren't even nobody and you can't tell and you gotta get a scientist to figure it out I'm getting these squared away I got a lot of these if I just separate them and take good care of them they'll be worth something one day these are like stocks and bonds man I put in for five dollars and I'm getting dividends it's an investment if you will Long term, short term, long, long term, you're going to cash out anywhere between th one month to, uh, not say, three months to, uh, you could wait on to them for probably five years before they get too big to ship. If you're going to ship seeds. Or fruit production. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm wondering. Is if, I, if and I get better reception right now. It's because I was down in the dirt. I'm going to get out of this greenhouse in a second. Buddy. Buddy. Huh? Did I miss that comment? Let me see if I can swing around and see. Is it still breaking up? I'm about to lose viewership, man. That's how everybody starts to run away. Did he say anything? Yo, the stream is breaking up. Man, I just lost everybody. It's all right. I'm gonna sit here and do my thing. Much better. Okay, it's because I put you in the dirt. Now let's see about this work I did real quick. You better work. Come on, girl. Work. Give it a twirl. Sashay. Sashe. This is all done while I was sitting down. These are all plants now i gotta pick this up work come on girl work give a twirl work. i'm just gonna sit in there sit. you remember that that song hey everybody thing looks good on you supermodel work come on girl work Give a twirl, sashay, shante. When I was a kid, man, that was the fire song. All the little kids were dancing to that in the locker room with their towel on like a skirt and like a, mm-hmm, that was what we did. Sorry, you got me on a jag. I guess I'll never hold a political office, will I? Hello, Adam. Hey, how you doing, Rose? Hello, Mother. Hello, Father. Remember that song? There's all the trees I repotted. They need to be watered in real good. This is just a soothing experience. When you get down to this, the part of watering, that's when you know it's time to wash your hands, go inside, have a spot of tea, Pet the dog. And come back outside and do it again. Rex should be outside, but I feel like he's just going to whine and get in trouble. So he's inside. Now I'm going to have to come back and water this again because the mix is not wet. But this will be enough to just get him primed, if you will. This is primed. This is not a real watering. This is just primer. This is like when you put your paint down. 
This, think of this as you're not, you just, you didn't even do nothing right there because that was dry mix. Yeah, that's a primer. That's not even gonna wet those things. If you had a dish underneath, maybe, but I'm gonna come back and have to hit those again. And I still got a long way to go. I gotta come back and get more soil, mix that, separate these, separate those. I got some one gallons, thankfully. I got some deep pots I might mess with. Okay, I got more one gallons. All right. Okay, so a lot of these are the Coronada Hestingas. They're going to be sold off real soon in, in bulk. I'm going to sell off some of those. I got some Fatranthas that are going to get sold off wholesale. These are uh, red Jabuticaba, flowering real nice. Since I've planted these, they have not flowered this nice. So it took about two years for these to get settled and finally put out a, a real good crop here of flowers. So this is looking good. This one could do a little more. These were set back by some dieback and some issues when I planted them. But now they're acclimated. I've got some fertilizer I just bought, my super triple phosphate. I'm going to throw that down definitely on these two, the uh, Hestingas. This one, the chickens, for some reason, have been going nuts at the bottom. Uh, doing their sand bath at the bottom, but it doesn't seem to hurt the tree. Nice crop of flowers on that. This one is just, ooh, covered up. Look down here. Look at all that activity. That's good stuff, man. That's the stuff that fruits are made of. Um, this one here, too. This one gave me a good crop. There's a fruit. Fruit on. There's two of them. Ooh. This is a real old one there. That one doesn't have a hole in it. That one's fermented. Yeah. No, no cat scratch fever. The Garcinia there. That's Garcinia Gardneriana. Gardneriana. And uh, this one's flowered, but it didn't set fruit. And some of these Garcinias, you need a male and a female, but I'm certain this one, you don't need a male and a female. So I'm hoping this actually fruits this year. I just planted it out. I made sure to plant it high. A little grafted Garcinia. We've seen him before. That's been fruiting. I'm gonna go waddle back over to the house. I want these grimmels to give me a crop, but uh, a little hot in here. I've been watering them real well. I think I gotta get them out of here and get them planted. So shoot, I might not have a decent grimmel crop for a minute. Maybe not for a minute. They don't like being uh, so hot and humid in here. Trees are doing just fine, but they'd do so much better if I could get them situated in a shade house with more air circulation. They're looking like they want to put out a crop, though. I've had a year where they put out four crops, two big ones, two little ones, and then I've had years where they just don't put out just one little sparse crop. It seems like, uh, I don't know how this year's going to go, but just going to wait and see. Let's see what else is in here. Some kind of bug infestation over here, I saw. Let's take a look at that real quick. Some kind of aphids. Usually don't pose too much of a problem. I just let them have their fun. It's on like a Fetrantha seedling I got. It's an ESALQ seedling that looked real neat that I kept. Bugs are loving it. It means it's sweet, y'all. means it's sweet. Lady burbs. Yeah, I need ladybugs out here. So a lot of the grafted stuff that I made in the, uh, I grafted a whole bunch of stuff in September, right as we started to get cold, which was probably a poor decision. Although I do have some trees that made it, probably half of what I grafted didn't do so well. This is a really interesting seedling I'm keeping. I think it came out of a batch of Grimmel and uh, and the ESALQ, where it could be somewhere in between Grimmel and Fetrantha. Kind of hard to show you on camera, but it's an interesting seedling I kept. I need to put them in bigger pots. You know what? I might just do that. It would be these two. There's a couple of them here. This guy's a little freaky. This guy's freaky. This guy's freaky. We're going to put these in bigger pots. 
makes a real pretty seedling there. I lost track of the parentage of that. You know, I think I had this with my anomalies. I know it's not an anomaly. I think it's just an Otto Anderson seedling, but somehow it got put aside for looking pretty. I was like, I ain't selling that. I'm keeping that one. So there's just every once in a while there'll be a tree where I'm like, I don't know why, but I'm like, sorry, that one, I ain't gonna sell it. It's probably no different than any of the others, but for some reason that got put aside. And same with this one. I can't figure out the exact parentage on that one. That one got put aside where I just decided I'd keep it. I couldn't figure what it was. It just looked a little different. I liked the way it growed so bushy. That's what it looks like at the base. So... And then these are some of the graphs where some are still coming, like still coming out. That one looks okay. This one is a good one that took, but it's just not ready to sell quite yet. These are the ones that is ready to sell. And then, you know, I had about freaking 30% take more or less where I still can't tell if some are taken or dying. This one's pushing out, but you never know. This one's coming. These are late, late bloomers. Failure, failure failure yeah failure happens to the best of us guys this one's a take though i'm keeping this one that's a take but see what happens is is they'll push out and almost get stunted by the cold so all you have is that little chunk of uh growth where it should be a lot more if it didn't get so cold but i've got some that that did good i can't really complain i just did some more graphs the other day i think these will do better being that they're in the greenhouse and they haven't got hit by the cold the failures, I'll just regraft them. I'll just graft again. But let me see. I've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got about 25 plants that are probably grafted that I could get ready to sell. These are getting uh, ready to sell. I've got one of these I'm listing, the uh, grafted uh, Luke's Garcinia. I've got maybe two or three of them that could be sold right now. This guy could be sold. This guy could be sold. I've got one that's by the house that's ready to be sold. These ones don't look so good, but they're trying to push out. I had a lot of failure with that cold, but I just did it. I did it because I had to do it. And then these are root stocks that are getting ready to be grafted. Uh, I do them in, in cycles, in little waves, but these are all going to get knocked out little by little, little by little. And there's even more root stocks over there that'll get grafted. And I'm going to throw this water on right now and let that run. We'll let that go for a minute. I gotta come back and turn that off. Oh, look at this. Full-time Jabo, look at, you know that tree. Can anyone tell me what this tree is? First to call it gets a prize, and the prize is a thank you from me saying thank you. There's that prize, baby. Anyone know what that one? Mame, good guess. Thank you. You get a prize. That's a runner-up prize. Well, thank you. Thank you for trying. It's not a Mame. Loquat, thank you. It's not a Loquat. You're getting close, though. Third's a charm. Someone's going to knock it out of the park. If I turn this Garcinia, thank you, Rose. Big thanks. No, it's not that. Cannabis, you got it. Big thanks, man. Cannabis. You can't even see the fruit hanging on it. There's a fruit on it. There's two fruits on it. Blurry. Uh -oh. About ready to pick. Yeah, that's about ready to pick. Canistel. Thank you. You got it. Big thanks. Big thanks, man. That's about ready to pick, homie. Let me see how it happens. It's soft. It stinks. You just saw me pick a canistel. I should do a video on that. I should have done a pre recorded whole video on that. But instead, we just did it live like a dumbass. People want to be able to see that. I'll probably pick the other one. Anyway, it's getting soft. It smells. Could wait a little longer, but I'm scared something's going to mess with it. 
This is in like a 10 gallon pot. Yeah, that's why I got two, you're right. But it would have been nice to have one on the tree, then be able to pick one and show people the difference. I mean, I just did, but it could have been a pre-recorded video. So that's that right there. Canistel, the variety's Fairchild number two, makes a smooth fruit. I heard really glowing reviews about this variety, but in my personal opinion, it's just a Canistel. Tastes good, I guess. Small tree, maybe. That's what it is. It's a, a small tree, maybe. Could save yeah the live feed will be saved but it should it's better when you do a dedicated video for something like that you'll get more hits on it i'll still try to go out and do it i'll just bring this one out in my hand and do a pre-recorded video just got a couple and so waiting to try it needs to yeah dude you got to let them get ripe if you don't let them get ripe they taste dry and pasty and not any good what you think i got something for you what you eat canistels now uh uh, oh, no, she did put a hole in it. Dang, they're vile little devils. They see red stuff. No, stop it. No. Dog, they're on me, y'all. They see that canistel zombie chickens. That's the one that attacked it. They need to get up in this grove and do some work. She's vicious, this one. They're everywhere. He's darting. He's on the run. The other one tries to whoop his ass. Stay puff, he's sidelines. And then he just chased him off. And the ladies just follow me. <laughs> yeah, I know, like the cats. You know what I mean? They're like start pecking your eyes. They definitely would eat a body for sure. They'd peck on it and then the maggots. I found a dead chicken. If they're gonna eat a dead chicken, they'll eat you. But here they come. I gotta clip his spurs. I could take these on a walk. Take them around the neighborhood for a walk. I'm gonna go get him some food. This one, they don't like him. Lock your doors. Here, look. There's some eggs and the egg fruit with the eggs. That's the first time you saw that. Rex didn't like that. There's different crews and different posses. This crew doesn't intermingle with this crew. There are different sides of the tracks, if you will. they are gonna stay on this side. Give them a little food in this dirt pile. Some for y'all. And then we come on to this side. The west side. The best side. He runs it over here. This is his crew. Yep, you got it. He holds it down, that one. We're gonna stand in the middle. I'm missing birds today. Where'd they all go? Sometimes they get locked in here. The wind blows it closed and they get locked in here. Not today. This are... I'd like to let them out, but they get their ass whooped all the time. That food's no good anymore. Oh, there they go. This is who I was waiting for is this crew. There they go. There they go. <laughs> Did 
They'll eat that food up before you know it. Dude, I go through like a bag a week. That's that. It's a chicken farm now. I'm gonna zoom in. I know people say it'd be easy on that zoom in. That's the crew right there. Fred's behind bars. You see Fred locked up. They hate Fred. All of them hate Fred. They're drinking out that pond still. Probably not the best thing to drink out of because they shitting it a bit. It looks clear though. Water looks good and clear. <laughs> Little crop of beauty of fruit. That didn't last long. There's Tony. He's the only one I can hold of the males of the other type. Tony's good people. I can't get rid of Tony, but I'm looking to get rid of three, three of those seal roosters. I got too many of them, but Tony stays. That's Billy. He's all right. That white chicken, Billy. He's a real jumpy. He runs this side of the tracks. See, look, I'm walk right past that rooster. He didn't even fight him or nothing. Everyone said the seal chickens would be the hardest fighters. Nah, it's these ones right here. Whatever that thing is. He runs, the he runs it over here. And then there's those twin girls right there eating the food. And then Fred's on lockdown. And then who's this? I don't know that chicken's name. That's her twin. See, they look so much alike, I can't tell these two apart. How do you tell those apart? There's no tell at all. They just look exactly the same. That's why it's so hard to name all the seals. Man, they look exactly the same. Hi, Water Lily, what's up? You're just catching the stream as it's winding down. Put a bracelet on that one. I can't put a bracelet, it'll hinder there. What it is is they, they like they die off and whoever's left is the ones you remember. This one's up to something. I know penguin. And then that's Pinky. She'll jump on your head. Yeah, better late than never. These crews like intermingle. They got intermingling crews. That's the oldest uh, chickens there. These two are the oldest. They're like six years old by now. That one on the right and left. I think the one on the left. The one on the right's the oldest. And I had them since they were little. They're like five, six years old. They stopped laying eggs a good year ago. That chicken's big. That snuggly, she's big and bad. She's the one that definitely will jump on your head. She's thinking about it now. She's the one that jumped on my head for a feed. Happens before you know it. Here it comes. I called it. I called it. I dodged that one. Did you see that? Did you see that? She tried to jump on my head, dude. I had to do a duck and cover. She going for it again? See if I can catch it on camera. You gotta act like nothing's going on. I'm just gonna let her do it. Let's see if she does it. It hurts. Let's see if she comes for it. Size me up a second ago. No, nah, she's good. She, she, I caught it.
pulling weeds. Watermelon look real good. I grafted one and it failed. I tried to graft some little tiny ones and they, they failed. They're pulling weeds like crazy. I gotta walk back to the greenhouse and turn that water off or it'll get too wet in there. She's a sweetheart. She had chicken pox not long ago and she got right over it. Thank you, Lord. Peach white owl. You see what I colored it? <sighs> She's been molting. Sapogrillo graphs are brand new, so they're not like, um, you know, it's going to take a while to figure that out. You've been molting, haven't you? <laughs> See her sit there? Go peck an eye out. They get mad when another one sees another one chilling, the other ones come to chill. Get off of mine. This one here is the devil. That one's the one that jumps on my head. There she goes. Like, yeah, they go for this mole, man. She went to take this mole off. If you had a tick on you, it'd be a good thing. But moles, man, watch yourself with a mole. Every mole is a meal. Woo! And eyeballs, huh? You go for eyeballs too? Freak. Pecker, peck to pecker. Yeah, don't give them any ideas. Uh, this one's looking real good. She just went through a molt and she's got brand new feathers. She's a big girl. She's very big. She's gotten big, big, big. I'm surprised by how big she is, actually. Big girl. She's a sweetheart. Snuggly. This is the one that pecked Chris's eye in a video. And then she jumped on my head just now. Let's give her what she wants here. Put her up there. See what she does. Out of matey. Just close your eye. She's good with it. Just close your eye. I seen her take a man's eye out. Two seconds before you know it, she'll get your eyeball. What's she doing? She just wants to take things from you and hurt you. You just want to take things and hurt people. Why? She's not going to be happy until an eyeball's pecked, man. I'm getting her off of here. Get out of here. He's got to get his spurs trimmed. Look at how he's walking. Right? He's walking funny. I've trimmed them and trimmed them. I got to trim them today with a damn hacksaw. Get them marching, goose stepping. Yeah, I definitely got to trim them up. Come here, why don't you let me trim them right now? <laughs> I got him. I got him. I'm going to try to trim his nails, but not on camera. But yeah, I got to I got to trim these things. Trimmed him before. Ah, he pecked the camera. He's pissed. All right, y'all. I'm going to try to trim these up. You going to keep it on for this? 
I wonder if I could use a hacksaw. You're a good boy. How am I going to hacksaw you, buddy? Give me this leg here. Is this animal abuse? You got to have your trims clawed. Your claws trimmed, homie. They're interfering with your daily performance on the range. Let's see if I can get it. Good boy. Don't panic. Let's not panic. How do you do this? I almost have to go at it left-handed. It's all right. It's all right, homie. Just chill. Chill. Yeah. I don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna need someone to help me hold him for that. I couldn't get it, but he was being really well behaved. All right, Hacksaw Jim Dunahy, whatever his name is, Jim Dugan. We're going to get back at it.